this Angelo with A Euromotive, the foremost leader in European car diagnostics and information systems. Let's get started now with the meat and potatoes of this DOS system. That is the breakdown of configurations starting with DOS 2 and see how it works. The power for DOS functions comes from that electronic coil mounted in the ignition switch housing that supplies inductive current to the circuitry of the key fob itself. You remember that? To let you in on something before we get any further into DOS and keys, for all versions of DOS, there is no battery required for the key. The battery within the key fob itself is used only to power the RCL functions, the remote control locking, just another Mercedes acronym, and this is for use in the centralized locking function. For DOS 2 vehicles, W163 with the DOS 3, this coil is also used to transmit and receive radio frequency signals for reading and writing to the internal EEPROM. Follow me so far? Roger that. For DOS 3 vehicles, except for the earlier 163, the ML versions, the transfer of data between the EIS and the FOB EEPROM is performed via an infrared signal. Also, since there is no mechanical blade for this DOS 3 version to be able to unlock the ignition switch, the release of both the ignition switch and the steering column itself is performed electronically once DOS validates the key through the infrared data exchange and then the key can turn. Remember me mentioning about keeping that lens scratch free and polished? That's what we're talking about. DOS 2 system will be covered in this session of DOS configuration for the keys. Now you remember getting back to the DOS 2 system and the bladed key, right? Guess we don't have to go over that again? So let's move forward to the DOS 2 configuration. May need some paper and pen to take some notes here, fellas, because there's plenty of this you need to go over once we've covered this. These key IDs are programmed into a Virgin DOS AAM module at the factory using the valet key, also known as the one-way master. This master key is programmed at the PDC with all eight predefined key numbers that are assigned to the vehicle in the FDOK. At the factory, the master is used along with the HHT, the handheld tester, to initiate the download of these ID numbers. Once the download has taken place, the key set can be married to the DOS either by a function on the HHT or after approximately 40 engine starts. The one-way master then becomes one of the valid eight key numbers and is designated as the valet key. Other than lacking the RCL functions, the valet key has the same EEPROM and programmable rolling code functions as the rectangular FOB keys. Another acronym describing the HHT that is the handheld tester will be used in this session. It's a basic electronic advice used by the service technicians to diagnose and program vehicle functions. It connects to the OBD2 port and communicates over the CAN. With DOS2, there is a maximum of eight unique keys per vehicle. These keys are programmed into this brand new Virgin DOS AAM module at the factory using the valet key. This is also known, remember, as I said, the one-way master. This master key is programmed at the PDC with all eight predetermined key numbers as assigned to the vehicle in the FDOK. And it's all done initially in the earlier models using the HHT and with the newer model cars using Zentry. I hope that you guys are getting this explanation. It may sound complicated, 
Well, it can be, but smart guys like you, you'll get this figured out real quick. Jump on my site at ayourmotive.com. I got tons of information and examples there, including documents that will help you understand this DOS system. For you younger technicians that's never seen an HHT, well, there it is. Now, here's the trick. When a new key is requested, either because, let's say, one is lost or a customer desires an additional spare key, it is ordered from the PDC, where it is created with the next unused key number according to the FDOK and the track. If the key is a replacement for this lost key, the service center technician will disable the key that is missing. By accident, somebody can't find that and drive off with your car. This can be done as either a reversible or an irreversible process. This has no effect on the RCL function. Its programming is handled separately with the AAM, which means that it's possible to have a key that can function for RCL, but can't start the car. Now, if a customer is lucky enough to purchase a vehicle without having the AAM checked, then they may very well find that AAM within that vehicle has all eight key numbers that have been created by the PDC. This means that any additional keys that would be required for a replacement is going to require an entire replacement of the AAM, the DOS module, and all of the locks on the car. Think that might be a little expensive? This is where the professional is separated from the hack. Missing something like this could either make you look like a champ or a chump. Know your profession, fellas. Again, once it's downloaded and has been taken into place, the key set can now be married to within that DOS, either by a function of the, let's say, the earlier models, the HHT, or the Zentry software, or after approximately 40 starts of the engine. Now that one-way master then becomes the valid eight key number and is designated as that vehicle's valet key. Other than lacking the RCL functions, the valet key has the same EEPROM and programmable rolling code function as a regular rectangular fob key. So this pretty much finishes up session three of the DOS, EIS, and EZL lesson. Part 4 will be coming up shortly and we'll pretty much wrap everything up on DOS 3. So stay tuned. See you next time around. This is Angelo with A Your Emotive. Be well.